Well, good afternoon. It's Dr. Krevins. Uh, in this relatively short video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the readings in a little bit more detail for this week. But I'm going to start with the Dwayne Johnson reading uh, because that I know may seem unusual, uh, and you may wonder how it connects in with the Sontag and and with paper number two as you start thinking about it. But but uh, there's a reason I put them together, and and it has a lot to do, as you probably noticed, if you've looked at the uh, Dwayne Johnson reading. With his use of photographs and there's a lot of family photos in this reading as you're going to notice when you take a look at it or if you've already taken a look at it so in a second i'm going to share with you my uh, the screen share of the article uh, i'll you know just mention some things about this one in relation to the susan sontag piece which is really the main focus for paper number two so just keep that in mind as you're uh, as you're working on uh, on this next assignment and this next set of readings and i'll try to mention some things to look out for too uh, i've posted the uh, the quiz uh, uh, for these readings and for paper number two. So you can take a look at that when you get a chance. Uh, and so I'll mention just some details that you may want to pay attention to as you're reading these and as you're thinking about them for the second paper. And as I've said before, this kind of gets us into our regular schedule now where every two weeks you'll have another paper due. So on the day uh, when uh, papers are turned in, uh, you know, by that deadline that morning, I always uh, assign the next paper. I do that for all my classes, even for in-person classes. Any day a paper is due, I immediately assign the next paper and the next set of readings so that you have a head start on it and you can start looking at it. And, you know, as we get, you know, further here into the semester, what I'd recommend is, you know, try to manage your time as best you can. This is the regular schedule we'll be on. You'll know every two weeks we'll have a new set of readings and a new writing assignment. Um, so you can kind of look ahead and see how to balance off your schedule for this class with your other classes, particularly as we get closer to the midterm, what you're gonna find is that you may have some classes where you've just had reading and you haven't actually had any other assignments uh, aside just from reading assignments, but you, as we get closer to the midterm, you're gonna have more tasks and maybe other papers to do. So really start planning ahead because this is the point in the term where you'll start seeing more assignments uh, most likely from other classes. So um, so with that said, let me talk a little bit about this Dwayne Johnson piece and how it relates to the uh, Susan Sontag reading and to paper number two. Now, the first thing I should mention is why not read Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I mean, who doesn't who doesn't like The Rock? You know, whether you like him in the uh, Fast and the Fur Furious movies, or, or if you're like me and you're looking forward to seeing him in in uh, the upcoming Shazam movie, if you if you saw the other one, um, you'll know that he doesn't appear in it, but he is going to be appearing as the anti-hero named Black Adam, who's a character from the Shazam or Captain Marvel, as that character was once called the universe. And I'm a big fan of that character. I got all kinds of Shazam stuff, which, you know, I already liked Dwayne Johnson, but I'm excited that he's going to play in the next one of these movies because I've got all kinds of characters. I've got this Shazam, you know, here um, in, in a Shazam glass. I've got... Um, I've got Shazam's best friend, who's a talking tiger. He sort of appears in the first movie. Um, I've got a Shazam car that one of my friends at Harper gave me when I gave a lecture a couple of years ago. I've even got a Shazam rabbit, uh, technically called Hoppy the Marvel Bunny, uh, that, I, that uh, I have had for a couple of years now. So anyway, I'm excited for Dwayne Johnson to be in the next Shazam movie playing Black Adam. I don't have a Black Adam action figure. Maybe I should get one for my shelf here. Um, and I, I also enjoy using this reading from his autobiography, which I'm about to share with you because it's fun to read. I'm sure most of you are familiar with him or you've seen him in movies. So it's you've got some connection to him, I, I would hope. Um, so let me show you what we got here. In Blackboard, you know, you've got your readings. You see you've got your, you know, assignment. Uh, for paper two is here and then you know uh, you've got the usual kind of a grammatic grammatical checklist that I always put up here but here's our reading so let me go in here and let me open these up for you and these this is the two readings that that you're going to be looking at for paper number two the on photography which we've talked about before I'm going to open it up again um, just in case I want to make any points about it uh, and by the way if you want to take out your notebook or your tablet to take some notes this would be a good time to pause the video and and, uh, and maybe take some notes on some of these ideas but you know, the Sontag piece is there and then the Dwayne Johnson. And remember, these are PDFs. I don't often use these, but for readings like this that are kind of difficult to find. Um, and I apologize, you know, for this parts of this um uh this scan of the of the Johnson piece, you'll you'll have to expand on. And that's easy to do, uh, by the way. So for example, uh, if you're flipping through it and you see that the pages look like this on the top of your screen, this is how you'd flip it. Uh, around so that you can read it. I've had a couple of students ask me about that. So that's easy to do, um, you, or you can print it out, as I said. And I give you this reading because I like how focused he is on family. And you'll notice that that's been a theme from the very beginning of the semester. We, we saw that in the Mike Rose essay. 
We saw that in the Toni Morrison essay. We have the first third of this Sontag essay, really, well, I should say first two thirds with the vacation section that's about family photographs. So you can see that these readings do fit together in terms of the way these different writers are writing about different aspects of family life. In the case of Mike Rose and Toni Morrison, it was talking about family life through the lens of work and, and the, each of their family's philosophies of work. There's a little bit of that, by the way, in this Dwayne Johnson essay, because he talks about his family business, which is what he calls it, uh, which of course is wrestling. His dad was a wrestler. His grandfather was a wrestler. His mom, you know, also worked in the business uh, in support of his dad. I think she probably sort of ran, ran a lot of, uh, of the more business end of the of things for his, his dad. And so it continues on actually with that theme that we had in those first two readings from Rose and Toni Morrison. But in this one, we're also seeing those family connections. And so what do I mean by that? Well, let me skip ahead a little bit. And I'm going to draw your attention here, uh, for example, to page. Let me find the page number here. Uh, I do have a copy of this book, actually, but it's at my office at school. I don't have another copy here at, in my home office. So I'm on page four. And on page four, as you see, we've got this photograph of his grandfather, his grandfather in his traditional Samoan dress on one page here, and then his grandfather in how he would dress when he was working as a professional wrestler. Now, why is this significant? Well, if you've read the essay, you know that on the page before this and, and the pages around this, he talks about this family tradition of working in his family business. And these photographs that are found throughout the reading show you all the members of his family. So in that way, here's that connection with Sontag. Remember that she says in her essay, in the first part, that photographs are a means of showing the connectedness, as she puts it, and that's a, a phrase that she uses, of family life. And Johnson tries to show you the connectedness of this, these different generations and people in his family by including these photographs. So we have his grandfather. If I skip ahead here and I scroll through the reading, you will see the, the, the image here of his grandmother and his grandfather and, and the, the rock, the little rock with, with this very cool shirt that he has on here. It looks like a, a late 70s, uh, early 80s photograph. I think he and I think Dwayne Johnson and I are around the same age. I think he, he might be a couple of years younger than I am. Uh, later on, we have a picture of his dad, Rocky Johnson. Uh, and then the next page, we have details about what his dad's life was like as a wrestler, as an African-American wrestler, and one of the earliest ones to work in uh, professional wrestling in the uh, 1970s. In fact, I can remember as a kid, I used to watch wrestling uh, in the early 80s when I was a kid, and I, I, I remember his dad being on those TV shows. I remember Hulk Hogan and and uh, a lot of those Rowdy Roddy Piper and those other characters on those shows, but his dad was a big part of that. And so we get some information on that. Probably one of the best photos in the whole thing here, we have the photo of him and his mom, his little baby rock with the football and his mother there. Um, so all through this, these pieces from his essay uh, that I've asked you to read, you have these family photographs and you'll notice whenever he talks about his family members, he tells you the traditions that he comes out of, whether it's the Samoan traditions of his grandfather, um, his, his, his dad's work as, a, as one of the first African-American wrestlers in the business, his mother's work in, in helping his dad out and taking care of him and, and, and being part of, again, this family business of, of a wrestling family, a family that's in entertainment. That, that Johnson to this day is still carrying on. You know, he doesn't wrestle anymore, but he's been a, a very, very successful actor for what the last two decades now, at least. Uh, this book, by the way, was published before he really, you know, went to Hollywood and started acting and transitioned out of, of being a wrestler. Um, and so I use this as a supporting example and a kind of supplementary reading for this because you see him using these photographs to show that connectedness. He shows his grandfather, he shows his dad, he shows his mom. I believe his grandfather and his dad have, have passed away, but his mom is still with us. And I think, you know, this is showing his connection to those people and those people who formed him and inspired him. And he even tells you some funny stories at the end about when he was a little kid uh, and um, got into a little bit of trouble. There's a photograph of him here on uh, outside the gates of Graceland um elvis's uh, mansion and uh you see him standing there as a little kid and this is right after he's had the story about um 
an interaction that he had on the playground with one of his friends. I won't get into that. Hopefully you'll enjoy that story. And don't do that at home, by the way, what he did to that kid. He learned the hard way also from his mom not to do that. So this is a way, and the reason I gave you this is that he has a lot of family stories in this essay. And I think it's a good model if, for example, you are doing topics number one or number two for the next paper. And I really want you to get a head start on this. So remember, there's three topics. The first two are related to family, stories of family and family life. You've got the first part here that's about family photographs and why they're so meaningful. And remember, if you do topic number one, you just have to pick a family photo, like the ones I, I showed you in the last video. And then you've got to break it down. You've got to analyze it. Tell me, tell me more details about it. How does it show the connectedness of your family? Tell me any funny stories that might be related to the photograph that you've selected. Um, if, for example, you're doing topic number two, that's still, in a lot of cases, a, a family-oriented essay. Now, why do I say that? Because in the past, when I've given this assignment, and I've done this assignment for the last at least five or six years, I've done it for quite a while now, um, I'll have people write on topic two, and they'll write about a vacation that they went on with their family members. So it's, it's not dissimilar from the first one, but it's more targeted. And as I mentioned in my last video, uh, Sontag has a more um, comical or sat satirical uh, sense of, of vacation photographs. She thinks that they can be a little ridiculous because we take so many of them and maybe we don't even look at them after we, we get back from these vacations. I think that's even more the case now uh, when you can take as many photos as you want on your, on your phone. Uh, so those first two topics for this paper really are about how photographs show family life, family experiences, family connections, uh, you know, especially to people that are sadly no longer with us. And I think Johnson in his essay, or those excerpts from his autobiography, sort of gets into that territory about, you know, using photographs to sort of spark these memories that he has of his grandfather, and how much he admired him, of his mom and how much he admires her, how much he admired his dad and the, and the sort of principled way in which his father carried himself when he first got into the business uh, back in the 60s and 70s. And so the Johnson, you know, you're not going to be writing something exactly like that, but you can kind of see how another writer uh, takes photos and then uses them to tell his stories. Now, the difference with this paper, and I'll talk in a, in a minute here about topic three, which is slightly different, um, is that you have to analyze the photo. So let me give you an example that uh, from one of my photos on my wall here. You know, as you can probably tell from my office, I've got this whole wall of, of uh, photographs. I'm going to show it to you there that's over my drawing table. And so I got a lot of, uh, a lot of my family members uh, who have passed away as is kind of my, my sort of uh, little wall to honor them. And I wanna show you another one that might be hard to see. You're probably sick of seeing these kind of photos. Here's one of my uh, great-grandfather on, uh, on my mom's side. He was, he was born in Italy, uh, early 20th century. I never got to meet him. He passed away, I uh, believe in the 1960s, probably a few years before I was born, but I've heard a lot of stories about him. And here's a photo of him. If you can see it, this is from an old newspaper photograph working in a factory in my hometown of Waterbury, Connecticut, uh, probably in, uh, I don't know, that looks like it's probably 40s, 30s or 40s. I'm not sure what factory he worked in. I believe it may have been one of the brass manufacturing cap um, factories that was in my hometown up through the 1970s. And so you see him move, moving, labor, moving, moving wood. He's in the wood shop, I guess, of his factory. And he's moving uh, wood from the, these planks onto this um, looks like some kind of cart that, he, that he's putting them on. And there he is. That's where I, where I, I get my black hair, or at least my, my dark hair when it was still black and not turning gray and white now. Um, uh, so there he is. And so if I selected this photo to write about for, let's say, again, topic number one, uh, the first thing that I would do in, in, in the part of the paper devoted to the analysis is I would describe exactly what I'm seeing. Well, here's my great grandfather in a work environment. He's got all these planks stacked up behind him. He has somebody that might be his manager or his overseer or something here, uh, you know, maybe directing him with the work that he's doing here on the factory floor. Um, so I'd give kind of basic description of it first. And then the next thing that I would do if I were writing about a photo like this is I would, I would talk about any memories that are, are triggered or related to this photograph. So I have some stories about my great grandfather that my mom told me that this, this photo uh, reminds me of. I see he was a hard worker, which I hope that my, my sister and I have carried on that tradition to, to take pride in our work uh, and to do the best job that we can in whatever circumstances that may be. I'm, I'm sure he, he would be happy to know that my sister and I 
are both teachers. I don't know if, if uh, I don't know how much education he was able to have as, a, as an immigrant coming from Italy in the early 20th century, but um, I'm, I'm guessing probably it was not a lot at that time. He probably went right to work after he and his, his wife uh, got here in the, my great grandmother got here in the early 20th century. Um, so we see him working hard. As I said, I, I can look, if I look closely at him, I can see the family resemblance. He, you know, my mom takes after him. You know, uh, I, I look a little bit like the Italian side of the family with all the black hair. Uh, and the eyebrows, that's, that's from the Italians. Uh, my sister takes more after the Lithuanians. So maybe I would talk about the family resemblance. I would even maybe write a little bit about questions that I would have had for him. You know, I, sometimes I look at these old photos and I think like, wow, if only I'd had the chance to meet him or to meet my grandfather, to ask them questions about their lives and all the things they experienced. I, I was so lucky that I was able to do that with my, my, my grandmothers on both sides since I knew them as when I was a kid, but I didn't have that opportunity with my, my grandfathers or my great grandfathers. And so this is another kind of example of the connectedness. I'm going back to Sontag, the connectedness that I feel to him by looking at this photo and looking at the work that he did 70, 80 years ago and to understand how the work that he did you know, made possible what I'm able to do now. So there's that connectedness back, that kind of respect to, to this particular ancestor. It's a great photo. I'm, I'm glad my sister sent me the photocopy of this. It, again, it was, it was in an old newspaper article, I guess, about whatever factory he worked at in the 1940s. It's just very, very cool. And I keep it over my desk just to remind myself to, <laughs> to paste it back up here, you know, to keep taking pride in my work and do the best job I can, just as I'm sure he did back, back in the day, as, as you say. Um, so, that's an example with this with this paper. Now you remember, there's different there's different options for this one. If you want to write about a vacation photo, which if I can find one, I'll, you know, it's been a while since we took a vacation with with the pandemic, so I don't have any vacation photos to share with you. But if I were doing topic number three, for example, let me stop my screen share there. For that one, it's slightly different. You're not talking about family photos, and that's where the Dwayne Johnson is maybe a little bit less helpful uh, if you're doing the third topic. But the third topic is very much about uh, uh, something in the news, a contemporary story that you might want to write about. You know, find a, a recent photograph in the news that you find interesting, find an article that relates to it, and then you can write about uh, you know how she responds to those kind of news photographs. That's in the third part of her essay, and I talked a little bit more about that in the in the previous video from this week. So anyway, let me sum this up. I just wanted to talk a little bit about these two readings and how they connected. And I've given you the Dwayne Johnson because I think his essay um, and, and his excerpts from his autobiography, especially in the way that they use photographs to, to show the connectedness to these family members um, is very good as sort of a model, just to show you the kind of memories that are evoked for him. The only thing he doesn't do obviously is analyze those photographs because that's not his focus, but he's telling you stories based on the photographs. Uh, that he has in his uh, his article with those memories of his uh, his family members. So again, take a look at the readings. Please let me know if you have any questions on them. I'm happy to answer them, particularly as you're working on the quiz or as you get started working on the paper. Take a look at the um, the previous video that I put up this week on the structure for paper number two. Uh, again, I'm happy to make any suggestions as you start working on it, send me a draft. The earlier you send me the draft, the more time I'll have to look at it and the more time I'll have to give you some nice uh, feedback that I hope will help you as you're working on it. And most of all, I hope you enjoy writing this paper. I know that that may sound easy for me to say as an English professor, but I've always really enjoyed reading these uh, because um, it's always fun to see how my students analyze the photos. And uh, no matter which one you select to write about. And it's always uh, fun to learn more about you and, and learn more about your thinking process in terms of how you're responding to Sontag and her arguments, which again, are, are all debatable. You know, you can disagree with her as you're writing this essay. That's perfectly fine. All right, so uh, let me get back, speaking of grading, to looking at some drafts for another class. I'm gonna take my uh, Hoppy the Marvel Bunny here. And, and, and since Rosie is not sitting in here in my office right now, uh, I'm gonna use Hoppy here as my uh, grading assistant, I guess, for this afternoon. So take care, uh, have, a, have a great afternoon, and I will talk to you in the next video. See you then, bye.